यमके कष्ट मिटाकर परम गति पाता ओम जय गंगे माता मैया तो है सुखदाता तेरी गोद में आकर तेरी शरण में आकर मन शांति पाता ओम जय गंगे माता मैया प्रेम सहित गाता दास वही है सहज में भक्त वही है सहज में मुक्ति को पाता ओम जय गंगे माता ओम जय गंगे माता मैया जय गंगे माता जुनर तुम को जाता जुनर मैया जी को जाता मनवान चित फल पाता ओम जय गंगे माता जय गंगे माता जय गंगे माता जय जय judgment of myself and others. I judge others who ignore issues important to me. I judge myself for being judgmental. I judge my past and find it difficult to forgive myself. Judgment is a way for us to stay separate from the rest of the world. It's a way for us to stay separate from ourselves, separate from our hearts, and separate from everything else in the universe. Because as I, as I judge, in order to judge, I have to be looking at the object I'm judging And the mind can only function in separation. So for example, the power of judgment is very useful for us. I'm about to go swimming. I'm not a very strong swimmer. I'm standing on the beach. I'm looking at the waves. My power of judgment is very useful to understand. Is that wave too strong, too high, 
Or is that something that I can, that I can swim in? Good to understand. Power of judgment, very good. I'm about to pull a pot off a stove, off a the fire on the stove. Judgment is going to be very good to understand how long it's been on the fire, how hot it might be. Am I going to need a pot holder or a towel to grab it? Or am I going to be able to get it? Simple things. Judgment in and of itself is not wrong. We need to use it to move through the world. Walking down the street, I've got to cross the street, cars are coming. I need to judge how fast is that car coming? How far away from me is it? How quickly do I walk? In order to know if I'm going to be able to get across the street in time. The problem comes when instead of judging our surroundings in order to be able to tread them safely, we're judging those with whom we're supposed to be connected, including our own selves. As I hold others separate from me, as I hold myself separate from me to look at it, in judgment, it's actually coming from a very safe place, which is why we love to judge. If I can sit over here and judge you, that's very safe. My heart doesn't have to open. I don't have to connect with you. I don't have to surrender to anything. I don't have to drop deeply into anything, because judgment, of course, is all in the mind. The heart doesn't judge. The mind judges. So I don't have to drop deep. I don't have to surrender. I don't have to become one. I don't have to open. I'm able to sit back, sit at a distance, stay in my head, and feel very high and mighty about it. Because if I can judge you, particularly if I'm going to judge you negatively, well, I actually end up feeling better about myself for a choice that I've just made against why I'm here. So the first piece, though, of course, as the questioner said, I judge myself as well, is you don't want to now say, oh my God, yeah, look at, you know, I'm not even a good spiritual person. I judge other people. I judge myself. I can't do spirituality either. That, again, keeps us an arm's length away. And so the judgment of the self is a way that we stay in our minds rather than actually opening our hearts. Every minute that I'm judging myself, that I'm looking at myself and saying, oh my God, you are so stupid. I cannot believe you just said that. Oh my God, what are you doing? Oh, you're so ugly. You're so, why did you eat that? Why did you do this? Why did you, whatever it may be, whatever way we may be judging ourselves. It's keeping me at an arm's distance from my true self, from my heart, from my life, from the fullness of who I am. And so the solution, the only solution to judgment is a conscious and conscientious choice over and over and over again for connection instead of separation. You're taking a walk in the forest. A bear or a tiger, more locally relevant, or a, an elephant, also locally relevant, coming towards you. It's very good to be able to judge. You want to judge how far it is, how fast it's coming. Can you climb a tree? Can you get out? Does it look like it's angry? Does it look like it's in a good mood? My goal in that moment is survival, not oneness with the tiger or the elephant. But we take that into the rest of our world. People in the world are not wild elephants or wild tigers. 
attacking us. But we literally move through the world in this survival mechanism of holding everything at this arm's distance. So to free ourselves of it is this conscientious choice in every minute for connection instead of separation. If I'm judging you, I'm separate from you. And how can I make a choice over and over and over again for connection instead of separation? Especially my friends. I mean, the question says, I'm judging my friends. I'm judging myself. These are the people through whom my experience of connection to the world grows. My loved ones my family, myself, and slowly, slowly the whole world. But I have to begin somewhere. And so we make a choice. Connection rather than separation. And especially of the self. You know, we're here in Rishikesh. I would imagine if I said, okay, show of hands of everyone who's, you know, taking a yoga class somewhere or doing yoga, it would be... Almost all of you. Well, in yoga, one of the things that we talk about all the time, nonviolence, ahimsa, right, the core of it, that that yoga actually means, which leads us into compassion, right? Loving kindness. Whether we actually are practicing a specific loving kindness, compassion meditation, or we're just cultivating it in our lives. Well, ourselves are just as worthy of compassion and loving kindness as the rest of the world. When we do meditations on loving kindness, it's not for all minus the self. Oh God, grant me compassion for all living beings except me. Loving kindness for all, except me. But most of us tend to do that. We tend to leave ourselves out of the equation. How can I develop love for all, compassion for all, oneness with all, except me, because, oh my God, I am the worst. I am the stupid one. I am the worthless one. I'm the one who's a failure. And so just make sure that your practice of yoga, of meditation, of compassion, of loving kindness, of whatever your, your path may be, that it includes the self as well. And as you do that, your experience of self, the capital S self, expands. My materialistic viewpoint says, this is who I am. I end here. Then there's this empty space. Then this beautiful young woman begins over there. She is that. Then there's empty space. He begins over there. But spirituality tells us no. There's no place I end and you begin. I'm not this body. And this body in any case isn't nearly as solid as it looks. It's energy. Put me under an electron microscope and you don't see borders and boundaries and lines. You see energy. I'm spirit. I'm energy. Your spirit, your energy. There's no place one ends and the other begins. And so as my connection to myself grows, so does my experience of what myself includes. And then instead of needing to sit in the really cheap safety of judgment, because that's really what it is. Judging you is just giving myself cheap safety. It's a lot easier to sit over here in separation from you than it is to open my heart and connect. So instead of doing that, I come into myself and I allow my experience of self to expand, to include you. 
And it doesn't mean that we love everything. It doesn't mean everything is, is perfect. Even in our own bodies, even in our own lives, we all have things. There's lots of aspects that we want to work on, like to be better at this, better at that, develop this skill. have stronger muscles over here, whatever it may be. That does not keep us from experiencing the connection with it. And that's important because when we talk about connection and oneness and love, it doesn't mean that we sugarcoat everything and everything is perfect and there's nothing I need to change and ahamba must me, I am God, and so don't even start trying to tell me what I need to work on. It's not that. It's an experience and a knowing that who I am The core of who I am, the self, is whole and complete because that's what I've been created out of. And that's what we meditate upon. As I sink in my meditation, I actually have that experience. And when I have that experience, then I'm able to move through this body, through this life, through my skills, through my challenges, through what I need to learn, what I need to develop, in a way that it's not about me being a problem or me being bad or me being less than. And then I'm able to extend the same to others. So every time you find yourself judging, simply say, in this moment, I'm going to choose connection over separation. I'm not going to waste time and energy in separation. I'm going to come back to connection. And again, lastly, it doesn't mean I'm going to approve of everything you do. Just in the same way that the judgment of the waves, the judgment of the pot on the stove, the judgment of the car or the tiger or the elephant is important. We also have to survive. I need this body. I've only got one. Our experience of awakening and enlightenment has to happen through the body. Which is sort of an interesting irony that we actually need the body, the mind, the brain in order to delve into the experience, the meditation through which we have the awareness that we're not the body, the mind. So I have to protect it. So stopping judging doesn't mean I leave my common sense at the door and become stupid and just allow, you know, tigers and elephants to, literal ones or metaphoric ones, to eat me up and stomp all over me. But it means I'm not falling back into a habit of keeping the world at an arm's length. Because we're here to open our hearts and connect. And until I do that, I'm missing the point.